It's uh, so nice to be back in person. I actually see a number of people that I thought only existed as uh, postcards. Uh, so very exciting uh, to, to, to be back here. So I'm going to give you an update on what's been going on at EarthSense. So EarthSense uh, is um, a startup here at the university. And uh, we work on what we call agricultural intelligence, which is applications of AI and advancement of AI for the purpose of agriculture. We are, at this point, about 25 full-time people. Uh, we have an office here at the Atkins Building, which is just across the street. Um, and we also have an office in India and field locations over there. And EarthSense was founded by uh, myself and Chinmay Soman. Um, both of us have roots at the University of Illinois. So at, at our heart, when Chinmay and I started thinking about this company, we wanted to create robots that could transform landscapes, right? So we wanted to create robots that would basically terraform worlds. And we wanted to go to Mars. We were like, Elon Musk is making the rocket, so we'll just put our robots on there, right, and, and go to Mars. But we said that, you know, we, we thought that the, the right place to start is on Earth, where there's a lot of challenges uh, that we're facing in agriculture, and how can we bring this technology to bear in agriculture? So we believe that robotics and AI will make agriculture more sustainable and more profitable, and we believe that this will happen because robotics and AI will create new options for farmers that will help them become fundamentally more sustainable. Um, and the, our secret master plan is we start with crop breeding. You know, a number of uh, great firms out there who are really working at the foundation uh, of agriculture, uh, build up our technology, really create value, um, and then from there move on uh, into you know, more and more different types of cropping systems. And we're so uh, fortunate for the kind of support that we've seen um, at the University of Illinois and the research park, right? Right from 2018 when we had these funny looking 3D printed robots that broke all the time and barely survived field conditions to now that I'll, I'll, I'll show you some of our uh, new robots that we have that are really rugged and have been field validated. So first I'm gonna talk about our TerraSentia robot, which is probably uh, something that everybody here has heard about, of or has encountered. And this is a robot that we've been building over um, three years now. And to date, we have deployed 140 of these robots. Uh, last year, we made almost 100 of these robots. And this is a purpose-built robot. And that's one of the key things that we do at EarthSense. We build robots that are driven by a purpose. We're not a generic platform robotics company. Each of our robots have a purpose, and it does, uh, does that job. So TerraSentia is designed to collect phenotypic data in fields. And it's designed to be portable, is designed to be rugged, and is designed to be taken on an airplane so that breeders, and these could be large companies uh, or specialty uh, university breeders, can access their fields and scan their fields in a, in, in a, a lot more profound way than they were able to do before, right? So we, uh, we believe that this robot gets them 100 times more data um, with 10 times, the, uh, 10 times less of the effort. And one of the, the, the things that we're really glad that everybody believed us in um, was that these little robots can actually survive the rigors of the field. Um, so here's an example um, of this robot trying to do cool things. And we, we like to have fun with our robots, and one of the, the big bias that people have, and I'll bring some of these robots uh, at the ActEx showcase, is that, that people think that small is weak, right? And that uh, little... Is, uh, is not powerful. But there's been so much advances now in battery technologies and in, in motor technology, especially brushless DC motors, that some these robots that we have actually have a lot of pull. So here's uh, one of our engineers sitting on the robot, uh, and then the robot is pulling a John Deere R-Series uh, tractor. Um, <laughs> as, and it is, the, the, no, the, it's, just, it's just something that we found that was big and heavy. Um, so, um, so we've been deploying this for crop breeding. Um, and again, like I said, it's a purpose-driven robot. It's compact. It's designed to fit through the rows of corn and access the crops from a different viewpoint than what drones and satellites can do. And so we've deployed a number of these robots. I'll show you quickly how this all works. So the robots uh, go into the field. They're autonomous. They can verify data. Uh, and they're going through these breeding plots, collecting phenotypic data um, in a fully autonomous manner. 
so this is an, and over, I think, many thousands of plots, we have verified some of these autonomy and AI technologies uh, and also made sure that the data that these robots collect is verified and guaranteed by us. Here is a very exciting trait that we delivered on last year. This is the corn ear height trait. So the robot is driving through the field, it's looking up, it's identifying ears of corn, and then it's estimating the height of those ears. Uh, and, and we do this over thousands of plots and then deliver this data at large scale. And here's an example uh, with uh, Steve Moose here at UIUC uh, of how our data actually correlates back with what humans are measuring. And there's a pretty strong, uh, there's a pretty promising results here that show that this data can really uh, be the future of breeding. And this is just the beginning. Um, more recently, since last year, we've been getting more into uh, commercial agriculture. So the, one of the first things that we're doing is bringing this technology, which is fundamentally low cost, right? Because these robots cost a lot less to make, and they're more or less autonomous. So five robots can cover 80 acres in about five hours. So that creates options such as under canopy cover crop seeding. So here's our robot that has 120 uh, pounds of payload, and and we and you know it can deliver cover crop planting at five dollars an acre compared to fifteen dollars an acre. So we did this last year, uh, and the idea again is that we can get into the crop in June and July when the crop is still standing. The robot drives from under the canopy. Uh, it's a team of robots are driving together, and they they dist they uh, broadcast seed or use other methods of deploying the seed. So we've done a hundred acres last year, and looking forward to do uh, quite a bit more this year. And then finally, this is today's our soft reveal day. Um, thank you, Laura, for something bigger, something that uh, we were um, waiting on uh, to do. And this is our uh, TerraMax, our new robot uh, with 2,000 pound payload uh, that we're looking to now commercialize and bring to market. So thank you very much. We'll be around in the evening. Uh, you're more than welcome to come visit our office uh, in the Atkins building where you can see some robots and meet our people. And I'll take any questions later. Questions from the audience for our Garash and EarthSense. I want to know more about the big bot, because you didn't say a lot about it. So what does the big bot, the Max, do differently than Terrasentia does? Uh, just has a lot more payload. Yeah, so we can deploy it in areas and, and crops which need more payload. So there's some interesting applications that we're thinking of. We're not ready to reveal, do a proper reveal yet, but Top that's secret, the plan. we'll, we'll yep. find out more later. <laughs> Martha's got a question. Thank you. I, I saw you when I came last time. Uh, gorgeous. H how long? How many? How many hours can the battery? Yeah. The battery, and then with weight. Yeah. How much? Yeah. I imagine different, so, different batteries. Right? Yeah. Like I said, the so battery battery technology has come really a long way. So Terra Sentia, three hours battery life, uh, we, and we haven't really optimized it. On Terra Preta, the the cover crop robot, uh, it has two large batteries. We get six hours or so. And then Terra Max, we're expecting a full day of uh, battery. And on the little one to recharge, how long to recharge? We swap the battery out, so it's immediate, yeah, swapping. There's a swapping mechanism. It's a hot swap, so you change the battery without losing power. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I know we're actually out of time, so sorry, Goresh. I'm hoping you'll stick no around. And tonight, come visit if you'd like to see EarthSense. I think we're stopping by tomorrow with some guests as well. So we love showing off the bots. Thanks for giving us an update about EarthSense. Thank you.